Welcome to Counter Purchase. Here you will see the landing screen, which is a list of all of the purchases that you have created. We have draft, placed, delivered and received statuses across all purchase orders. So in the top right hand corner, we're gonna click new order. Now I have a supplier select page and I'm gonna select St. Ali. Now you can see that we have the categories which I can choose products from. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna select blend and the feels good organic is what we order weekly. And we order 30 kilos a week of the feels good organic. Now I might be running really low on product, so I'm gonna jump into the product and I'm going to enter a note. Low on stock, aged coffee please. This way the supplier knows that you need aged coffee. If I decide that 30 kilos is not enough, I can just jump back in there and I can bump this up to 35 kilos and apply those changes. I can jump out at any time and the order is automatically saved as a draft. So at the top there, you can see that I have a draft for St. Ali. We can just jump back in there. The benefit of this is that mid-service, you might be running low on product and you can jump into purchase, create the purchase order, it will automatically save as a draft and you can go back to your point of sale. Now I might want to add some Mocker Master filter papers. Just need one of those. We also have a search function which will search category and product. So I've searched blend and it brings up the blend category. I can select that and it shows me the products. I can optionally search for sterling, which surfaces the sterling blend. Now I can add a delivery note. Side door after 6 a.m. and we'll save that. Now I can review my order and I can see everything that is relevant to this purchase order on one screen. You can see that it is already in draft status, created date, delivery date, supplier address, delivery location, and delivery notes, as well as the list of products that I've ordered with the notes respective to what I entered. I can go ahead and place that order. On this screen, you'll see my email address twice. That is because I own both sites, but the to address will be the email address that is on the supplier contact, and the from address is the user that is logged in and creating the purchase order. You can also CC and BCC anyone you like. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to send that. Email successfully sent message up the top there. Now my order has been placed. And I've just received the email. So now I wanna start receiving the product. I'm gonna click on start receiving down in the bottom right hand corner. You'll notice at the top, once I start receiving, it has moved the status to delivered. So at this point, we know that the delivery has arrived and it may not necessarily be unpacked straight away. So at this point, you can leave the purchase order and it will be saved in the delivery status. This way, we always have the correct status at the right time. When the order needs to be unpacked, you can go back in here and you can receive the order. I might not have received 35 kilos of the Feels Good Organic. So I can jump in there and I can change it to 30. I'll add a note. So I can say that we didn't receive enough. Apply those changes. So at the top of the list of products that I've ordered, you can see a search to add products. Since San Ali didn't give me the full 35 kilos, they've given me five kilos of replacement coffee, which is the Sterling blend. So I can search to add products. I can type Sterling, select the product, and then just jump in there to make it five kilos. And I'll say, Replacement. For missing coffee. And I'll apply those changes. Now the products that we are receiving are correct with what was in the delivery. 
I can jump up the top here and I can enter an invoice number. And you'll notice down the bottom that I have add PDF or image. So if there are any mistakes, I can take a photo of the incorrect order. If something is broken, we can take a photo of the broken product. You can upload any PDFs that you like that may be invoice related or packing slip related. Go ahead here, we'll snap a photo. We've got the microphone here. Let's use that image. Now you also have the option to delete that image if it's not appropriate, if it doesn't quite capture what you need as part of that purchase order, but we're gonna leave that one. So when we go ahead and receive the order. Now at this point, the inventory for these products has all been updated. And now that the order has been received, the purchase order has been synced with my accounting package so that my accountant can match or can reconcile. Now if I return to orders, now you can see that there is a receive status against that order. There's also a great filter functionality up the top where you can look up specific order numbers, suppliers, you can, cert you can filter by status or a date range or a combination of all of the above. Now we're gonna jump into order reminders. This is a great way to be reminded to order from all of your suppliers. There are so many to order from each week so why not have a simple way to not forget? I'm gonna go ahead and create a new reminder. I'm gonna select St. Ali. They're our example company of the day. And I want a reminder for my weekly coffee order. Now I know that I order from St. Ali on Sundays and they roast on Mondays. So I need that order Reminder to come through at 1 p.m. on Sundays, and I wanted to repeat every week. I'm going to save that reminder, and now every week at 1 p.m. on Sundays, I will receive an email notification that I need to place an order with St. Ali. The next level from order reminders is actually the next feature in the left hand menu, and that's recurring orders. Now you can see I have a couple of recurring orders in here from previous demonstrations. And the main difference is, is that it is an order reminder with an order attached to it. So if we go ahead and we create a new order, St. Ali, we know that we need 35 kilos, so it feels good organic. Put our delivery note on there. So now I'm going to schedule the order. This is going to be our weekly our weekly San Ali order. We know that it goes out on Sunday and we want it to start on the 9th. So we want the order to actually be placed by 3 o'clock. every week. So I'm review that order. Make sure the delivery address is all correct and the correct delivery notes are there with the correct products. And we're gonna go ahead and save that. Now that we've saved that weekly San Ali order, a draft will be created at one in the morning on the day that it is due to be sent. So on Sunday at one in the morning, a draft will be created and it will appear in my purchase orders list view, which is just here, the first screen we went to. At any point from then, before three o'clock when it sends, I can edit the products that are on that list. So if I decide that I need more or less product, I can make those adjustments. At any time, I can also send that draft so that it is a placed order. If it has already been placed, it will not send a duplicate at 3 p.m. If nothing is done to the order, it's not deleted, it's not modified, it will still send at 3 p.m. Next on the list you'll see par levels. Par levels are great because they allow you to set the number of products or the amount of a product that is needed for the period between orders. 
Now you'll see here that we surface the product name, the stock on hand, the last stock count, and the par level. So page one and page two have not been counted, and they also have no par levels. But on page three, we can see that the Jed Limited release Malbec, both 2012 and 2013, both have stock on hand, a last stock count, and a par level. So I can also add just here, we'll say 24 of these two, par level updated. Now what that means is that at any time when creating a purchase order, I'll jump in here and do one for you now, this time we're actually going to select sample coffee roasters. Now obviously they don't supply us with Jed Malbec, but we can still search for products that are not assigned to that supplier. So we'll just type 2012 there, and we can see that the Jed Limited release 2012 has 50 in stock, and our par level is 24. So we don't need to order any of those. If it was 2013, we can see that we only have eight in stock, and we need 24. So I would jump in here, and I would add 16. That would get us to our par level. Now you'll notice that the Jed Malbec below it, the non-limited release, has minus 25. To me, that would indicate that there has not been a stock count that has occurred on that item. It doesn't mean that I have minus 25 bottles and I owe them. But it does flag that I may need to do a stock count so that my current stock levels are up to date. If I back out of that order, my order for the Jed Malbec Limited has been saved as a draft. The last menu item is stock transfers. This is something that we're working on currently and it is going to allow multi-site companies to transfer between themselves so that if one product is more successful at another site then it can be easily transferred with the cost of the goods applied to the new site. Now if you look down the bottom of the left hand menu you'll see help and support Click on that anytime you want to chat to us or reach out if you have any questions. It will also link you to guides to give you more information about counter purchase. Below that, you'll see my site name and my user email. If I select that, it will surface other sites that I have access to purchase on. This allows multi-site managers to quickly and easily jump into another site and create purchase orders. At any time, you can click next to the counter menu and it will minimize. So the sum of all these features are what's going to make purchasing and getting product into your business much more efficient so that you can stay customer focused. The counter purchase team has put a lot of time and effort into understanding our customers' needs and we hope that these features really shine through for you and it's the most efficient way for you to get product into your business.